All right, so this is just gonna be a walkthrough of how to set up a reporter on AWS. And so ideally, um, if you wanna set it and forget it kind of thing, you can just have it running in the background as a process. Um, and I'll also talk about a little bit about the, the current CLI. Um, it's still changing. Um, so we'll go over how to update that as well. So first of all, this um, tutorial kind of assumes that you have a AWS account and you can access your console. So you wanna to go to services and click EC2. Um, I don't know if people are like actually following along right now. Is that is that what we're doing? Okay, cool. So yeah, um, if we're here, let me minimize stuff. Um, so yeah, then we just wanna launch an instance. Um, and for people not familiar with this, this is, you're essentially renting a computer somewhere. Um, so you can do whatever with it. So go to launch an instance. We're going to go select Ubuntu, which is a version of, uh, it's a Linux distribution. Let's see where are we at here. We're going to pick a 20.04. Okay. That was the background noise uh, for me. My uh, siblings are... It's cute, but it's it's not distracting at all. Okay, good. Okay. All right, so so we want to select a T2 Micro. That's what we can use for now. Review and launch. Um, we're not going to change any of these settings here. We're just going to click launch. Um, and then so here's where we need to um, use a um, generate essentially this private key, which we will use to connect um, to our AWS instance from our own computer's command line. Um, and we can use um, SSH and I can uh, share that with y'all in the Zoom chat. If you wanna learn more about that, that's just a way to securely connect to a remote computer essentially. Um, so yeah, we're gonna click create a new pair. And I'm just gonna call this reporter example four. And then we're gonna download that. And so this is gonna depend on what OS you are, but basically um, you want to, wow, exciting, okay. I don't know if you heard my uh, brother there. But so essentially we just wanna open this up with whatever text editor you can, or you can just move the file itself so where you wanna move it, um, first open up a terminal. Um, on Windows, you can press the Windows key and type in um, terminal or CMD. Uh, on Mac, it's just gonna be terminal. But so to list the files, um, just press LS. And uh, we're actually gonna go and edit some things in .ssh. Um, when there's folders that begin with a dot, it just means they're hidden and you can see those by um, passing the dash A um, flag. And so we're just gonna go into dot SSH here and we're gonna make a host name so we can easily connect to our AWS instance. First of all, I don't think I launched the instance. So let me just do that really quick. Um, okay, cool. Let's see, Let's see. Um, how, how am I doing it? Is this like too fast or like, are we good? Okay, cool. Um, so now that we're here um, in our, um, in this folder, uh, we're gonna edit some things. Uh, mainly um, we're going to create this M key file here. Um, and if you're on Mac, you can just move the file. So you basically take the path to that file that you downloaded, wherever that is. And you can do a uh, move, you know, path to the file. And then do it, uh, and then do .ssh, and then the name of the file. But on Windows, um, I'm actually gonna create the file here. So for example, 4.m. And I'm gonna go and copy it. Okay. 
And so Nano is basically um, a command line text editor, and we're going to use that as well for um, changing our config files for the uh, Python implementation of Teliot once we um, download it and stuff. So once we're in Nano and we've, you can use just the common uh, keyboard shortcuts for copying and pasting in here. So just control V, I pasted it in here. And to uh, save the file, just press uh, control O um, to write out and then enter and then to exit out of here, press control X. And so if you do LS again, you should see that we created that file. The next thing that we're gonna do is uh, for convenience, instead of typing this long command and do the command, command line with like the um, address of our AWS instance, we're gonna write it into a file so we can reuse it for later. So we're gonna um, edit our um, SSH config file. And we're gonna make a new host name here. So navigating in Nano, you're gonna have to use the arrow keys. So we're gonna write host, I'm gonna call it reporter example four, four spaces, host name. And where we grab this host name is over yonder. We're gonna to go to services, EC2. Let's see which one it is. It sounds really loud on my end. Right. Two, what's the latest one? 1712. I think that's it. <laughs> there we go. All right, so let's see here. I just wanna make sure I have the right one. Okay, so yeah, I basically clicked on the instance to look at its uh, information. So doing that again, just go back to the one that you created. You won't have all these other ones here. Um, no. Which one was that? Sorry. Yeah, that one. I think so. And so you wanna copy the public IP for address right here. We can paste it in nano. And then the user, since we're on Ubuntu, it's gonna be Ubuntu. And so this identity file is our private key that we downloaded. So we're just gonna write the path to that. The tilde is just a, um, an alias for your home directory. For example. Pin. So the path to that oh. file, we're going to write that out, save it, and exit as well. Again, that was control O, enter, control X. And um, so from here, we should be able to SSH into that to access essentially our remote, uh, our computer that we're renting from Amazon, basically. Order example four. Uh, whoops. Oh, that's right. Um, so on Windows, I didn't use uh, sudo. Sudo is a command for running other commands as a super user. It just basically means that you have like all the privileges available. Um, and so what is that? I need to change the permissions of this file. That's what this is saying. So sudo mod hundred. This is just basically making it read only. Um, for this user, for example, for him, I need to go get my password because I don't memorize any. All right, cool. So now, and then if you're in the terminal, you can just press up to go to the last commands. Um, what? Let's see here. Reporter example four, reporter example four, public key. I think I used the wrong one. 
Okay. Did you change the permissions? No, I think I just copied over the the wrong uh, um, address. Oh, IP address. Yeah. 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 yeah, you used the same address twice. Uh, let's see. 12 2, 12 2, 17, 12. Okay, cool. So you just want to uh, say yes to add this to your known hosts. And so we're in here now. Um, we have access to this um, computer that we rented. Um, so you can just type clear to clear, clear your command line. And then we can just check out what's in here. There's nothing, which is as expected. PWD just tells you um, the uh, path that you are currently in, the folder that you're currently in, essentially. So what we need to do now on this um, Ubuntu uh, OS that we have rented, we, we need to update it and install some things before we actually install um, the Python implementation, implementation of Telia. So we're going to go sudo apt update. This will take a little bit. Pseudo apt upgrade. And uh, for a lot of these, you're just going to um, say Y and then press enter. This one might take a little. My zoom things in the way I can't really see what's going on. Who's, uh, who's following along with this? Are people following along? I cheated and started here. <laughs> okay, cool. So Tally, is this where the point where I start running commands or? Uh, in a um, sec, Brenda. Okay. Yeah. This is still just for Ubuntu. All right, so now we're gonna install these. All right, so now we are actually going to um, set up our virtual environment for installing um, PyTelia. So Brenda, this is your cue. Um, why we need a virtual environment um, is basically to install software and we don't want it to interact with anything that's already installed um, on Ubuntu, which there might be. So we are going to create a virtual environment. So we're going to do Python 3. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it env. Um, and then once it's created, we can activate it by going source and then activate. 
And you can tell that it's active because you'll have those parentheses and the name of it before your user right there. Um, let's see. Cool, yeah. Now we can just to run that. What? The activate? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And now um, we're going to install the CLI for using this uh, reporter example. And so this pip install, this is sort of like NPM install. Um, we're installing from the Python package index. Um, and so after this, we will check which version we've downloaded. Um, it will be 0 .0 0.0.6 currently. Mm -hmm. What was that? What is this latest command that you just ran? Pip install teliot dash feed dash examples. Is all the red normal? Um, yeah, just ignore that. I don't know what that is. I think that's the name, but this like particular <laughs> version of Ubuntu. Oh, I think that's because some packages require a compiler installed to actually uh, build if they didn't distribute a binary of the patch. Um, but if we're not using it, it doesn't matter. So once it's finished installing, um, just do a pip freeze, and you can do this at any point, just check your version of things. Um, and so you should have Teliot core and Teliot feed examples. As a reminder, Teliot core is a lot of like the foundational software that Teliot feed examples uses. Um, a lot of the main functionality for like interacting with the Oracle itself. Um, configuration and a bunch of other things. Um, Tell feed examples has um, some implementations of reporting reporters for um, the leg legacy request IDs, the active ones. So one, two, 10, 41, 50, 59. So whenever you pip install Tell feed examples, it automatically downloaded Teller Core, Tell Core. Yeah, so Teller Core is a dependency of Teliot feed examples. Cool. Yeah. And what was that command you just ran to see? It freeze. And so now I believe we're going to move on to setting up our configs. Yeah. So right now we just have our virtual environment and we're going to create the config folder for um, Teliot here. So we're going to go Teliot. Big. Oh wait, I think it's in that config. Wait, no, it's config in it. Sorry. There you go. Cool. Um, and so now, if you list the files, you'll have this Teliot folder as well, and we can go in and look at its contents by using CD. So list those, and we'll have some YAML files. These. Files are used for setting up our configuration. So putting your private keys in, um, your uh, endpoints, like uh, if you're using Infura or Pocket or something like that. Currently, Infura is recommended because it has WebSocket support. So we're going to edit some of these. Um, and so I'll go in and check out main.yaml for now. And I'm going to put a private key of. Okay, I need to get my food there. Wait for me. All right, so. So once you have your private key, put it over yonder. Yeah. 
save that, exit out. Again, that's control O, enter control X. And then we're gonna put in our uh, Infura API key. So I'm just gonna do it on rink B, but you can put your main net one if you're feeling like it. So we're gonna go over to um, Infura. And so this is a random project I had created. And we're gonna grab this right here or you can just copy the entire thing. Our API key. Yeah. Save that. All right. So um, I just navigated out of that folder. That's all that was. Um, now we're ready to report, I think. Let me just make sure. Yeah. Yeah, we are. All right, where's everyone at? Do we want to wait or? Anybody else get an error? I tried installing on my Mac too, and I'm getting some cannot import name C dumper from YAML. Aha. Uh -huh. hey. One minute. Yeah, I have anybody for that. Yeah. I would, yeah, I can cool. Was the main YAML supposed to be empty? No. <laughs> then Yours is empty? Is empty. Are you in Telly it, Brenda? <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. I did the Telly, Telly config in it and then the nano main YAML. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so Brenda. Um, uh -huh. From here, you want to go into uh, Telliet. Ah, okay. I, I was supposed to switch. Uh, and then it main should already be in there. How do I get out of the? Oh, of Nano. Mixer? Yeah. Uh, just do Control O, Enter, and then Control X. Okay. Yeah, it should have, it should ba basically look like this and then without a private key. Okay. Just paste it in there. Okay. Um, and Nick, that error is for, it's like a specific Mac thing. That Thank uh, you. Tally got me. Tally sent you, yeah. What, yeah. what error am I going to get? Well, you shouldn't because I think Tally already sent you stuff to install. Uh. Um, all right, shall we? So the command line uh, right now for um, reporting is called something different. It's not just Telliot, it's Telliot examples. And so we can check out all the available commands and stuff by using the help command. So since it'll be you know, changing probably a little bit more, so you can just check that out right now. You can see some of the options it has. So we can override the private key that we entered in the YAML file. You can override the chain ID. So by default, it uses rink B, chain ID four. Um, and then you can just do chain ID one if you want to stake on mainnet and submit on mainnet. Um, and then the one that is required will be uh, currently is legacy ID. So we can check that out. And then the two commands currently supported right now are tipping and reporting. So Sorry. for example. Quick question. Yep. Was the private key, Does it? do I include the zero X or I, do I exclude it for this? Exclude. Exclude, okay, thanks. Sorry. Very good. Um, yeah, so, and so for each of these uh, option flags, there's a short and a long version. 
So I'll use a short version for a legacy ID. And if I wanted to submit for the price of TRB uh, USD, that would be 50. Um, and then you can just do report. And there's a bunch of options for the report command as well. So I think this will list them. Yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, here we can see the options. So by default, it, it uh, reports continuously. So that's the, you know, eventually maybe you might want one that's you sort of just have running in the background and you don't have to check it out. Hey, uh, Tally, would you mind muting? Oh, sorry, I didn't realize. I'm learning some good French though. Appreciate it. Nice. Um, so yeah, by default, it submits continuously. It's just checking over and over again. If you're staked, it it it, gra it grabs the latest, the last timestamp that you uh, submitted. And um, if you're not outside of 12 hours, it won't submit because um, you'll get an error back from the uh, contract saying you're in reporter lock. So if you want to submit once, you can use that submit once flag. We're, I'm just going to run it as if you're reporting continuously. You can also set a profit threshold. So let's say you do dash P2, um, at a, it'll estimate the profit. And basically if it doesn't estimate a profit of 2% or above, then uh, it won't submit. You can also use a gas price speed. Currently the gas price that we are using is from F gas station. Um, and uh, you can use one of its options there. By default, it uses fast. Um, and then you can also use a max gas price. So like, if you don't want it to submit with a gas price of 250, um, then you can set it lower. So yeah, let's, uh, let's just run it. So reporting on legacy ID one, FUSD. Um, report. And so if you don't introduce like the dash P command, it'll just not check the profit. So I'll do like 10, I guess. So um, it'll tell you which uh, ID you're reporting for, which chain you're on, your expected profit, your selected gas feed, and then a bunch of logging messages. And here's sort of where you can see. So it prints these and it also um, saves them in a file called tell it feed examples.log. And so that's if you get errors, you can send that file to um, mirror any of the other devs. So we can like check out the extended error message and whatnot. So it also tells you um, which address is reporting. Um, your staking status and sort of what's going on behind the scenes a little bit. Um, so your estimated profit, this kind of thing. Yikes, it's not gonna submit. So it basically keeps checking until- It's not profitable right now? Apparently Buddy not, says no. it's profitable. Really? No, this is ring beat. Ring beat. Oh. Anyone want to do it on mainnet? Main it's it's profitable. profitable. Who's going to do it? I'm still I'm trying to over. edit. I'm still, I'm still trying to edit the main YAML file. <laughs> I'm in my 12 hour lock, so. I think I'm going to do it. So yeah, it'll, it'll look like this if it actually submits and you'll get uh, a link to Etherscan to check out your transaction right here that you can control click and check out and then after that it'll say you're in reporter lock and so there's one last set of instructions um, because if you currently if you just exit out of your connection to your aws instance right now it'll shut down this process and so um, it will not keep running so what i usually use is screen and this is like a built-in program that linux um, that Unix systems have, um, and I'll show you how to do that right now. So I just press Control C whenever I want to stop it reporting. 
Um, so yeah, uh, screen to you to do this um, to create a new screen session. Just type screen. Enter space, and so now the screen session is active, and you can just run that same command. Tell it examples. ID one report. I'll do like two percent. And so now, uh, when the twelve hours is up, it will try to it'll start trying to report again. Um, but I need to um, essentially put this uh, task, this running program, in the background before I exit out of this connection to the AWS instance. So to do that with screen, you're gonna press control A at the same time and then D. And so you're detached from that screen session. And so then from there, you can just exit out of your connection to um, that AWS instance. See it's closed and if I just want to reconnect and check out what's going on, SSH reporter example four. It's connected. And then do screen. I keep typing three E's. Dash R for resume. And your running program is still going on. And so if I want to leave it again, control A and then D to detach, and then to exit out of your connection to AWS computer, exit. Bingo, bingo. Cool. Reporting. How's everyone doing? So you, I see you have to use what web sockets here. Oh yes, yes. Copy the web socket endpoint from yeah. That's my bad. And does it work with other? So I see you have Infura plugged in here. Does it work with like Alchemy or Pocket? Any of those? So Pocket no, because they don't support web sockets. Um, okay. I don't know if Alchemy does. Actually, I haven't tried it. They do. So. Okay. Cool. And so there's a, some more um, places that you can look for like usage instructions, the documentation um, for Italia and everything. So you're right here using the CLI. It's linked right under usage. Go check that out if you'd like. Yeah, anyone have questions or anything? Everyone reported on mainnet? I was about to today and then I needed to watch Spuddy do it live before I I was ready to pull the trigger. You just got to send it, dude. <laughs> I just set the, uh, what I did was I just set the uh, profit threshold at like 200 at first because I was too scared that it would submit. Mm. Um, and then once I saw it like working a little bit, like connected to mainnet, then I like set it lower at like 30% and one went through. So. Wait, you, you added a 200% profit at first? Well, I just knew it wouldn't like, it wouldn't go right. through like it wouldn't right. find one you, so. yeah i guess to see if then there were any other issues that would pop up 
there was there's been no updates recently, right? I, as far as from yesterday. Any ideas on which idea I should report on? I Spuddy probably has like the best tips. Like I don't, I don't really know. Um, the best are. I mean, there's no. It doesn't affect the profitability at all, right? I think it does. Think so, it what command does. do you use to submit in this one? Uh, it's your setup. It's just, it's affiliate examples and then legacy ID, whatever legacy ID report, and then you can put a profit threshold. And if you don't include the P, it will submit no matter what. So be careful. You can lose money. And what's the two? So the two? Yeah, what's that? That's like your expected. Oh. Right. Cool. And then, so yeah, if you want to do oh. a submit on mainnet, it would be. Uh, let's see. So, so you have to be staked already, or can you stake through here? It, it will stake for you. Yeah. Okay. So, if you want to do submit on mainnet, you could do chain ID one, legacy ID, whatever. Yes. FJPY report, and then definitely put in a profit threshold for mainnet. Um, okay. Something. I don't know. Can you share that command on the um, chat, please? And do negative profit thresholds work? Like, could you do negative one as far as like if you're willing to sort of take? A loss just because you really wanted it, you know. Well, like one percent, you I could think assume so. that you're sort of buying with a spread. The default is zero, no. I don't know. Let me let me try. I'm not sure. Who? I just mined on Rinkby. Super cool. Should you put it on the Telia chat? I mean, on oh, the... I put it in the Zoom chat. Oh, Zoom chat. All right. Super cool, guys. Anybody else have any debugging stuff? No, I'm about to submit something, but I don't know what to submit. Are and you in Rinkby? No. Well, I I I, I oh. added. I know. No, I'm not because I removed Rinkby on right. the main file. Um, on mainnet, we need to get a Bitcoin and uh, the all the other ones a Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin. we're gonna work. So I think. Next time we'll we'll get some some other price IDs up, but this is super cool, Owen. Um, so chain ID one, we need one legacy one or two. Is yeah. that what Spuddy said? Yeah, those work. We could be like chain ID four, right? Brenda, are you submitting on mainnet? I'm going to try. <laughs> Yeah, just make sure you use the uh, like a, the command I sent in the Zoom chat, like uh -huh. the dash p. Uh huh. Okay. And someone just submitted so dash p twenty. What is twenty? Yeah, just remember, you guys. Just like the key thing is, if you do not include the dash p or dash uh, like profits, it will not check for profit, and it'll just submit. Right. So, which is fine if if you want. Might lose money. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but you know, like for, for Brenda, like we're going to be setting up scripts where we actually just care about getting the data on there. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, so like we don't, we're fine losing a hundred bucks. Like we just need to push the data for somebody. Um, so it can be okay. And then. Okay. So I'm going to submit it. So 20? No. If I just want to submit to see if it submits. Yeah, just keep we'll that just last try it. Yeah. 
Yeah, sure. <laughs> For ID 41, it's kind of spooky. The manual Anyone? data, do you have to like actually input anything? Yes. Yeah, so um, it'll ask you, it'll just ask you to type it in and you just type it in and then press enter. Oh, so like if you do that right before it submits, it'll ask you to type it in? No, no. So you like run the command as normal. And for a legacy ID, you just put 41 and then it'll, it'll eventually ask you for the. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I don't know if I have it. How much money do I need? I don't know if I haven't had enough ETH in this account. It's, it's something like a hundred bucks, right? Have you staked, Brenda? I think it's more because Tally Tal Tal tried to stake with that much. And it... I tried to stake with like $150 of ETH and then it's like. Try, that, try harder next time. <laughs> it did something. Depositing stake. No, it says address not yet staked. So I guess I don't have enough money. Yeah. Did, did if it, it, if it gives you. It's still going. It it, yeah, if it repeats it, then you don't have enough. Okay, then running median. Price oh, okay, then it went through. Reporting data. Let's go look at the transaction. Oh. Here, we're going to look at it. See how bad it was. I haven't looked. Okay, cost. Oh. I think I made 50 bucks. So, great. Uh -huh. You made 50 bucks, but you spent 200, so. No, I yeah, I was like, <laughs> wait, where do you <laughs> see the two? I lost 150, so. <laughs> but I tested it, the, it worked. Uh, wow. Worst case scenario, Spuddy, we can submit. Super cool, guys. Um, Thank you, Oh, and that was Owen. much faster than I thought it would be. Yeah. See? Thanks, Speed Owen, ride. Kelly. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Any last questions, guys? Yep. Good job, Owen. Thanks, Mike. Um, yeah. If, any, job, if anyone has like uh, trouble setting it up or wants additional help, just uh, hit me up or hit up Tally. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah same for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think we'll probably have an have you do another one, or maybe Tally or somebody else can in a month, and we can do writing a new feed example. Um, oh yeah, definitely. That, yeah. That'll be, yeah, that'll be sooner than later because sure. of the integration yep. stuff. Yeah. So that'll be a fun one. Anyway. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone. Hopefully you guys are all going to make some money. Um, and yeah, we're going to post this on YouTube or we'll figure out where to post it. So it'll live in infamy forever. Cool. All right. Thanks Owen.